Closure industry exposed, impoverished elderly in poor regions become professional debt bearers. Shocking truths unveiled, no one dares take on state-owned enterprise projects, worse yet to come? Qin Huang Dao, pleasure boat capsizes, 12 dead, 6 missing, no life jackets on board. Apocalyptic scene in Nanchang as Sulongjing's chains break, authorities alerted. Wanda's crisis, selling 16 Wanda Plus is not enough, Beijing headquarters also sold. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Closure industry exposed, impoverished elderly in poor regions become professional debt bearers. With China's economy faltering, the number of enterprises, companies, and shops closing down has been increasing in recent years. This situation has given rise to a unique group known as professional closure operators who specialize in planning how to safely and legally abscond with funds for companies on the brink of closure, thereby creating an industry chain. Recently, several stores of the well-known early education institution Jimbury, in mainland China, closed suddenly. Victims unable to reclaim prepaid funds sought legal rights but were told the institution's practices were legal, hence legal support was unavailable. The victims had no choice but to turn to the media. Media investigations have uncovered a special group behind these harvest and run schemes, professional closure operators. They use various improper methods such as changing the legal representative of the company and fake operations to allow the business owner or company boss to shed its skin in a legal manner, easily evading legal accountability while transferring huge debts to gamblers or elderly people in remote areas who are incapable of repayment. Recent reports by mainland media have detailed the workings of the closure industry chain and its professional debt bearers. According to these reports, since 2019, professional closure operators have developed an organized industry chain. These operators handle the transition of failing businesses by appointing a professional debt bearer as the new legal face of the company. This person takes on the business's substantial debts, legally avoiding any wrongdoing. Leading the process are those known as bottom dogs, experts in identifying and evaluating poorly managed businesses for closure. They scout for businesses, secure contracts, and perform financial audits. Intermediaries then find suitable debt bearers and take care of official registrations, while bottom dogs manage the deceptive activities leading up to the closure. This might include final sales events right before shutting down to maximize earnings. The business is then declared closed once the original owner is safely detached from it. Bottom dogs must be well-versed in finance or law and capable of detailed business analysis to ensure both the safety and practicality of closures. Typically, they take a service commission of 10% to 30% of the enterprise's debts. For example, if a boss has a debt of 3 million yuan, around 420,000 US dollars, the professional closure operators might charge 300,000 to 900,000 yuan, around 42,000 US dollars to 126,000 US dollars, depending on the services provided. The next phase involves the bottom dogs transferring responsibilities to an intermediary who ensures the business owner can discreetly withdraw by assigning the debts to the new professional debt bearer, who then becomes the legal representative. Once a business has been officially closed, any resulting legal disputes do not affect the original owners but are the responsibility of the debt bearers. These individuals, often either gamblers or poor elderly with no repayment capabilities, suffer minimal personal impact if they end up blacklisted for non-repayment. Manager Lin, who has experience in the professional closure industry, revealed to mainland media that gyms, barber shops, beauty salons, cake shops, chain restaurants, and nearly all prepaid service providers are potential clients for professional closure agencies. Manager Lin disclosed, because there is a complete industry chain and the operation process is simple, this group can handle dozens of orders in a short time, earning hundreds of thousands in a few months. This professional closure operator revealed that their business has peak and off-peak seasons. During off-peak times, these operators even advertise in groups claiming they can handle changes of legal persons and shareholders, and transfer issues of poor management and insolvency. On social media platforms in mainland China, complaints like paid tens of thousands of yuan, and the institution ran away half a month later, still in class in the afternoon, 
ran away by evening are commonplace. A partner at a law firm in Shandong interviewed by Chilu Evening News stated that the above operations of professional closure people might involve crimes of obstructing liquidation, illegal business operations, and contract fraud. However, due to difficulties in obtaining evidence and high costs of asserting rights, many times these illegal activities may not be effectively pursued. Shocking truths unveiled, no one dares take on state-owned enterprise projects, worse yet to come? Many Chinese netizens have claimed online that no one dares to take on projects from CCP state-owned enterprises because the upfront project funds are not returned. Some netizens also say that even more dire situations might emerge in the future. A video circulated online on April 14 shows the owner of a construction company revealing that in the past, everyone rushed to take on projects from state-owned enterprises, but now they dare not. In conversations with fellow company owners, they expressed a preference to keep their teams idle rather than take on such projects. Taking on other projects might only mean a loss in operational costs, but taking on projects from state-owned enterprises could be bottomless pits, potentially forcing them to deliver food to pay off debts. They explained that now working on these projects means lending them money and doing the work for them, with little chance of recovering the advanced funds. On the Q&A site Jiu, an account registered as a certified safety engineer named Jiao Wu Fengyun also posted last December revealing the same situation. The post mentioned that state-owned enterprises are desperately seeking teams globally, yet no one is willing to take on the work. It's not that the construction teams are unprofessional or lack technology, but rather they frequently need to advance funds and provide deposits. Even the requirement for advance payments and deposits would be manageable. But the key issue is that once the work is completed, they do not settle the accounts. When they finally do agree to settle, the process is extremely cumbersome and can drag on for years. This isn't just about doing construction work, it's about blatantly using your money to make money and pushing you around. Along the way, many will block you demanding red packets and gifts, causing you to spend more and more while recovering less and less money, and it might even end with not recovering a single cent. Who can still undertake such work? The post gathered 279 comments, with netizens saying, extortion and demands are secondary, the main issue is eventually not getting paid, which can financially kill you. Getting money after a few years used to be the norm, but now getting paid within 3 to 5 years is considered lucky, and often you might not get paid at all. If they delay for 10 to 8 years, what can you do? Many small and private enterprises basically collapse because they are dragged down by these state-owned enterprises. Municipal investments are now just debts. According to Voice of America, in the CCP's pursuit of GDP growth, local governments have incurred massive debts through local financing platforms to fund major economic projects to meet set GDP growth targets. Over the years, local government debt has reportedly exceeded 100 trillion yuan, approximately 14 trillion US dollars. According to IMF data from 2022, CCP local government debt has reached 92 trillion yuan, around 13 trillion yuan, accounting for 76% of GDP. With the current economic downturn in China, particularly the real estate slump, local government revenues and land sales have sharply decreased, leading to a debt crisis. In January this year, Reuters reported that the CCP State Council had instructed local governments and state-owned banks in the past few weeks to delay or stop construction projects that are less than half complete in 12 provinces and cities to control debt risks. Qin Huang Dao, pleasure boat capsizes, 12 dead, 6 missing, no life jackets on board. On April 13, a tourist boat capsized in Qin Huang Dao, resulting in at least 12 deaths and six missing individuals. It was reported that the passengers were mostly seniors from a travel group, and notably, there were no life jackets on board. On the same day, the authorities of Lulong County, Qin Huang Dao, Hebei, reported that the incident occurred in the afternoon at Taolin Ko Village, Lujiang Township. Initially, it was confirmed that the accident cost 31 people to fall into the water, 25 have been hospitalized, 12 have died, and 6 remain unaccounted for. Netizens revealed that the incident took place at the Taolin Reservoir in Lujiang Township. 
the boat involved was suspected to be operated by local fishermen and primarily carried elderly passengers. High winds were blamed for the capsizing of the boat. Tourists have expressed to the media that they did not see any life jackets on board, with some questioning, why are there no life jackets? A netizen disclosed that her mother-in-law, who survived the incident, reported that her aunt was among the missing. The travel agency organizing the trip was unlicensed, and the boat was unsafe, lacking life jackets. Others commented, the boats are operated by local fishermen. Comments from the public include concerns about the increasing number of senior travel groups, which are often seen as exploitative and lack safeguards. Many seniors are easily deceived due to their lack of understanding. One netizen shared, last week, I almost took a boat at Tailinka Reservoir. As soon as you get to the reservoir, many fishermen surround you, urging you to take a boat ride. Another remarked, these are all elderly people. There have been many incidents involving senior groups, too many have happened already. Others criticized the travel agencies for illegally organizing trips without proper safety measures, such as providing life jackets, with local fishermen operating the boats. Apocalyptic scene in Nanchang as Sulanjing's chains break, authorities alerted. In Nanchang, Jiangxi, a severe storm on the afternoon of April 13 dramatically darkened the skies, effectively turning daylight into darkness. Captured by local residents, photos and videos from around 1.30 p.m. depict a sudden shift as the city was engulfed in darkness amid a backdrop of thunder and pouring rain, creating a night-like atmosphere. That morning at 8.52, the Nanchang Meteorological Observatory issued a yellow thunderstorm warning predicting thunderstorms in parts of the city over the next six hours, accompanied by short-term heavy rainfall and gusty winds, urging the public to take precautions. Netizens commented, this is the darkest day I've ever seen in my life. The thunder was terrifying. What's happening to Nanchang lately with all these storms and thunder? Has Nanchang broken some divine law? Everyone in the comments is talking about the Suolongjing, what happened? There's a problem with the Sulongjing. The chains broke, they need to be fixed quickly. Previously, on March 31, a sudden storm in Nanchang shattered windows in high rise buildings, resulting in three deaths from individuals blown from their building, with numerous air conditioning units also being dislodged or falling, causing at least four deaths and injuring many others. Between the night of April 2 and the early morning of April 3, the area experienced 44,230 lightning strikes in just six hours. According to mainland portal website Sohu, during this major thunderstorm, the iron chains of the Sulongjing at Nanchang Wancho Palace, also known as Taizhu Temple, broke due to the sound. Another mainland portal, NetEase, reported that the chains indeed broke but have since been reconnected, and the ground has been repaired. Regarding the Sulongjing in Wancho Palace, it is said that about 1,600 years ago during the Eastern Jin Dynasty, a flood dragon stirred up storms in Nanchang. The Taoist sage Su Sun, who resided there, used his magical powers to subdue it. He then cast an iron column in the southern well of Dongya City, which stood several feet above the well. Below, eight iron chains connected the column to the earth's veins. Su Sun also cast a spell saying, if the iron column leans, the dragon will rise again, and I shall return, if the column stands straight, the dragon will be forever subdued. This is the origin of the ancient name of the Taoist temple, Taizhu Temple, which means Iron Column Temple. From then on, the menace of the dragon ceased to exist in Nanchan. Despite the chains being fixed, there have been instances where issues with the Sulongjing followed by repairs still led to various natural and man-made disasters. Wanda's crisis, selling 16 Wanda plazas not enough, Beijing headquarters also sold. The financial crisis of Wang Jianlin, China's former richest man, appears to be unresolved, even leading to the sale of the Wanda Beijing headquarters. To date, 16 Wanda plazas have been sold, and even with the 60 billion yuan investment agreement signed at the end of March have still not been able to stabilize Wanda's financial footing. Jimian News reported on April 13 that Beijing Wanda Plaza, located on Dewang Road and home to the Wanda Group headquarters, has also been sold due to financial pressures. 
Beijing Wanda Plaza forms a modern business district with Guomao Tower, HP Tower, Jingwang Center, GNY Soho, etc., which is a symbol of Beijing's business. According to Tianyanka, Beijing Wanda Plaza Industrial Company, Limited has recently undergone changes in its industrial and commercial registration. The original wholly owned shareholder, Dalian Wanda Commercial Management Group Company, Limited, has withdrawn, and a new shareholder, Kunhua, Tianjin, Equity Investment Partnership, Limited Partnership, now holds 99.99% of the shares, while Kun Yuan Chenqing, Xiamen, Investment Management Consulting Company, Limited, holds 0.01% of the shares. Concurrently, there have been numerous changes among the directors, supervisors, and senior executives. The equity penetration chart from Tianyanka shows that the new controlling shareholder of Beijing Wanda Plaza Industrial, Kunhua, Tianjin, Equity Investment Partnership, Limited Partnership, is 99.99% owned by Xinhua Life Insurance Company, Limited, and 0.01% by CICC Capital Operations Company, LTD. This means that Wanda's Beijing headquarters now has new owners, Xinhua Life Insurance and CICC Capital. Previously, at the end of March this year, in Dalian, where Wanda Group originated, Thai Alliance Investment Group, Citic Capital, funds under Ares Management, Ares, a wholly owned subsidiary of the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority, ADIA, called Platinum Peony, and Mubadala Investment Company, along with Dalian Wanda Commercial Management, officially signed an investment agreement. The first five companies collectively invested approximately 60 billion yuan, approximately 8.3 billion US dollars, acquiring a 60% stake, with Dalian Wanda Commercial Management retaining 40%. A person familiar with Wanda said that it will take time for the 60 billion yuan agreement with PAG Investment Group and other new strategic investors to be realized, and it will only temporarily relieve the crisis. Now, assets like Beijing Wanda Plaza have been sold. Within six months, 16 Wanda Plazas have been disposed of. Besides, according to Bloomberg, Wanda's purchased yacht manufacturing company, Sunseeker International, has also been sold. However, these divested assets have still not brought Wanda to a secure financial position. Beijing Business Daily also noted that Wanda may still have undisclosed worries. In addition to selling Wanda Plazas, Wang Jianlin also sold Wanda Movies last year, acquiring nearly 10 billion yuan, around 1.4 billion US dollars, in funds. According to the 2024 Huruan Global Rich List released by the Huruan Research Institute in March, the Wang family's wealth has shrunk by 72% over the past year, now standing at just 30 billion yuan, around 4.2 billion US dollars. Currently, Wanda Commercial Management is Wanda's most valuable asset but following the signing of the agreement with the new strategic investors, Wang Jianlin has lost control of Dalian Wanda. Now, assets like Beijing Wanda Plaza have also been sold. It is foreseeable that Wanda will continue to sell off more prime Wanda Plaza properties in the future. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.